Semiotics. Semiotics is a field of study that is about, as it says there, how meaning is created and therefore how our reality is represented through this meaning and the meaning that we find in signs. And we use a variety of different approaches to actually find out how meaning is created. And we're surrounded by different types of signs all the time, particularly now in our digital world. But this lecture is going to look in outline at how semiotics works and very much how we can actually begin to look at particularly magazine layouts and magazine pages to see how they communicate to us through all of these different signs. So semiotics at its most basic is the study of signs but that doesn't mean that those signs are um, star signs or pub signs or road signs but each of those signs stand in for something else. We know when we see those different star signs at the top there, um, Taurus the Bull and at the bottom Aries the Ram, we know what they stand for when we see them in the context of astrological signs. We know what time of year they're for and that whole notion of what astrology is, whether we believe in it or not, we know that it exists and we know that it is a method that some people use to try and predict the future. We also know from pub signs, when we see a sign like that one there in the top right hand corner, which of course is a pub in Canterbury, uh, when we see them, when we see those types of hanging signs outside a building, we recognise them as some form of symbol, some form of sign that tells us that this building is either a shop or, in this case, a pub. And particularly because we have those two words at the very top, Shepherd Neem, we know that that's actually a brewery. So we know that this is a pub that is run by this particular brewery, the local brewery, Shepherd Neem. And of course we have the, the name there of the pub and we have that image that then tells us more. You know, we recognise that particular image as being of a clergyman uh, in the Church of England. And so when we see the word bishop underneath, that anchors that piece of text to that picture as being, you know, this is a clergyman. That's what we mean by this word. And of course, he's sort of pointing his finger. So again, you know, we have that being underlined. When we see those road signs, yes, we have some text with some of them. But if we look at that uh, red circle with the white line through it, we might, if, uh, if we know anything about road signs, and particularly if you have done uh, your um, uh, driving licence and your driving test, you will know that that means no entry. And then underneath, we have text except for cycles. And, you know, and then the next one along where we have the exclamation mark, we know when we see that particular mark, in a typeface, in a piece of uh, text, we know that it stands for some sort of shock, surprise, maybe rising inflection, something like that, uh, but essentially a surprise, an exclamation. We are exclaiming. And then underneath it tells us what we need to look out for, otherwise we will be exclaiming. You know, we, we should be looking out for a bollard that is rising up. A rising bollard. So, you know, all of these different signs stand in for more information uh, that we already have. And that essentially is what semiotics is. It's actually looking at, understanding, studying how each of these signs that we're surrounded with, and not just the ones that are in the picture, but lots of different things, how they carry more information than just their appearance. 
So, you know, it's not just the straightforward denotation. We could say with the picture of the bull at the top there, the denotation is that that is an image of cattle, you know, a, a bull. Um, but because we know the wider context, we know that actually that stands for a star sign, perhaps if it's in that context. So semioticians and those of you that took language in the media last year will remember that we looked uh, mainly at three semioticians. And certainly if you have a look at the um, suggested reading for this week from Daniel Chandler, his book on uh, semiotics, which is a, I think it's a basic introduction to semiotics, he talks about three famous semioticians. So that is Ferdinand de Saussure, and those of you who are doing English language and linguistics will recognise or should recognise Saussure's name. Um, and the other person as well from the same period as Saussure is um, Peirce, sometimes also pronounced as Pierce. And these two men together from the late 19th, early 20th century, they are regarded as very much the fathers of semiotics. And they absolutely tie semiotics to language and um, philosophy. Then a little while later, mid 20th century, along comes Roland Barthes. So he's the third person that, as I say, is mentioned in the suggested reading from Daniel Chandler. And Roland Barthes broadens out this notion of semiotics and includes images. So there we've got at the top there verbal and or nonverbal signs. So that's very much so saw and purse. Then the next one down, an assemblage of signs, words, images, sounds, gestures. That's absolutely where uh, Bart comes in. And Bart, um, pronounced Bart, but written uh, Barthes, B-A-R-T-H-E-S. But he was a Frenchman, so we pronounce it Bart. Uh, and then the last one, recorded messages through writing, audio or visual recording. So, you know, essentially anything around us. Words image, sound, gestures, everything, absolutely everything around us can be read and understood, certainly by semioticians, but, you know, by us as readers too. So we can look at um, an advert like this that dates, I think, from either the late 60s or the early 70s, and we can begin to break it down and to understand what's going on there. So we have... Um, two people standing there, a woman that we can see sort of three quarters and a man who we can only see in profile. And the man is slightly higher up than the woman. So there is that sort of implication of um, him being superior, not least of all as well, because he's actually fully clothed and she isn't, uh, you know, and her, her top is, is revealing. Um, he is also, as it says with the text, he's blowing into her face. But we also have a double meaning. Um, of that phrase of blowing her face, um, you know, which of course, and for those of you that are thinking, hang on a minute, isn't that a sexual connotation? Yes, yes it is. And it is there, absolutely. And that sexual connotation is implied by lots of other things. The fact that he is higher up, the fact that he is doing the one blowing the smoke in her face, the fact that the smoke is white, uh, that she has her her face direct and, you know, her sort of a body directed towards him, her mouth is open, all of those different things. If you think it's there and there's a sexual connotation, the chances are it is, because as we know, sex sells. But we also have additional connotations here in uh, things like the colours that are used. So yes, this is a, a white couple uh, and presumably middle class because of the way that they sort of look groomed and, and so on. And, it, and also that they can afford to buy um, these uh, sort of cigarettes. Um, and, uh, you know, we also have, uh, as I mentioned, the colours, um, all of them are very much in a palette that echoes cigarettes, nicotine, 
um, but you know not in a negative way this is absolutely supposed to be about uh, being sexy and classy uh, and you know the 70s were all full of yellow anyway as well so you know we've got lots of different things going on there and you know this is a, an extremely um, famous advert and certainly you can find lots of uh, semiotic breakdowns of this advert that absolutely analyze what's going on in it so you know if you're interested in it do go and have a look at that certainly those of you that took language in the media last year you'll know this advert and you'll know all of those connotations so semiotics straightforward is the study of signs so all of those things words images sounds gestures objects essentially everything that's around us they all go together to actually form meaning in our reality you know we understand the meaning of the world around us by the different signs that we have around us when we go into a room we won't if we had no idea what the room was going to be what type of room it was as soon as that door opens and we go inside we will be able to understand the purpose for that room by reading the objects that are there you know if we walk into a room that has a um, some sort of oven some place where we can cook and perhaps a sink you know we would understand that as possibly being a kitchen uh, you know if we walk into a room that has um, a bed in it the chances are we will read that as a bedroom you know it's it's really really simple stuff like that you know and, and a lot of it we absolutely take for granted but semioticians unpick it and that's what we're going to be doing um, in some of the images we're going to look at in a moment. So semioticians have three main questions. So what does a sign or an assemblage of signs, so though all of those things put together, what do those different signs or a particular sign, what does it mean? So really simple, straightforward, we can see a particular image, what does it mean? What does it mean as far as a straightforward denotation? So if we think about that advert uh, that we just looked at, we've got a man and a woman, the man is smoking a cigarette, and we've got that text there that tells us that this is an advert for a cigarette called Tipolette. So that's what that sign means as far as the straightforward denotation but there is more than that going on so how does a sign represent what it means so you know how does it tell us that it's about cigarettes well we have the man holding the cigarette we have the man smoking the cigarette and we have the text underneath showing us what the packet looks like and explaining it. So that's how it does it. It does it in words and it does it in images. So why does a sign mean what it means? Well, that particular sign, as far as the images are concerned, it means what it means because we're told from the text, but also because we have this man smoking this thing if we didn't know what a cigarette was we could probably work it out you know so why does it mean that uh, and we have this notion of those straightforward denotation well we can understand it from the text we can understand it from these two people but what about that additional connotation that I mentioned all of those additional sexual overtones so why does it mean that and that's where potentially analysing an advert or analysing a magazine layout, which is what we're going to do in a moment, certainly we're going to look at some magazine covers, when we look at an image we can really get into interesting stuff and start to think, well, well why does that colour yellow in the background, why is that being used? Why is that being used for a cigarette advert? You know, why is the woman depicted wearing fewer clothes? And why is she depicted with sort of three quarters face? You know, so we can see most of her. Why have we only got the man in profile? So what's going on there? So this is where we can really begin to unpick and work out, well, what, what else is going on? What else are we being told or sold? And it's absolutely about critical reading and reading of the image, critical reading of that image. 
Um, and that's so crucial to everything in this world nowadays. You know, we need to develop our critical awareness of reading um, text when we're reading newspapers, magazines, websites, but also we need to be very critical, so analyse what images mean too, and realise that we are being sold certain things. So when we look at three images like this, and again, those of you that um, are or have done language in the media, I'm sorry you will recognise these images because I roll them out every time. Um, essentially, the denotation, so the straightforward meaning of each of these pictures, almost like the straightforward description, is that they are all pictures of fish and chips, which at one time used to be the, uh, the national British dish. It's not now. Uh, the national British dish now is curry. Uh, so, you know, at one time in the past, this was very much something traditional, fish and chips that people would eat at least once a week, generally. But each of these images are slightly different. You know, they do not all depict exactly the same type of fish and chips. And, you know, we could really begin to unpick, well, what does it mean when fish and chips have got tomato ketchup on them and they're on newspaper. Compare that to what does it mean when we see fish and chips with a garnish and tartar sauce and a lemon wedge on a sort of fairly fancy plate and on a table. What does that mean compared to a fish and chips in a takeaway box outside at the beach? So, you know, they all have different additional connotations because we are being given more context. So they all have different signs in there, different signs, different symbols that we can then read and understand. So, you know, for semiotics and a semiotician, that's absolutely what they will be doing. They will be unpicking what each of these means because of the additional connotations. So what is a sign? So we need to remember this, and I know I keep on sort of repeating it every couple of slides. It's really important that we realise that signs can be verbal, non-verbal, visible, non-visible, and they can take the form of words, images, sounds, smells, textures, tastes, objects and actions. If you think about when you walk into a supermarket, for example, I know it's, it's difficult nowadays because, you know, we're still in lockdown and, and so on. But if you think back to before, before the pandemic, when you walk into a supermarket, quite often you will be able to smell baking bread. And quite often people who are trying to sell their house are told that when they have uh, somebody come to view the house, they should brew coffee. So, you know, each of these smells give a particular sign. You know, if you can smell coffee brewing, that's supposed to make uh, make the place feel more homely and uh, perhaps sort of quite cool and, uh, you know, attractive. If you walk into a supermarket and you smell baking bread, that's supposed to make you feel hungry and again, make you feel as though you're coming to a shopping experience that's actually going to do much more than just, you know, go and pick up the bits and pieces that you need for your weekly shop. But instead, you're going to be um, seduced by the lovely baked goods, you know, so things like that, um, you know, we are being sold something. And, you know, next time you go into a supermarket, even with a mask on, you might be able to smell baking. But what you should also start looking at is what sorts of colours, for example, are used in the aisles that sell uh, cleaning products. Have a look and see what sorts of colours of bottles are used for cleaning products. And what you should find is that there are very, very few cleaning products that are kept in a brown bottle. Because brown, you know, in that context of a cleaning, um, you know, product, uh, obviously it has the connotation of dirt, mud, soil. Whereas if you go into a, a confectionery aisle, the aisle where they have all the sweets, you will see quite a lot of brown because in that, in a sweets aisle, 
the 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 additional connotation is that uh, a brown wrapper with sweets is going to imply things like richness and chocolate. So, you know, depending on what types of colours, um, you know, rather depending on what product is being sold, different colours will be used. And as I say, different smells, textures and, and so on. So when we're thinking about looking at uh, a screen or a print copy of a magazine, uh, one of the things that we will be told additional information or shown it through those signs is actually by the typography. Now, if you have a look at these different typefaces, the majority of them are all straightforward black typefaces, but the two on the left hand side are both varieties of pink. Now, the top one, that's Comic Sans. And yes, it's pink, and you're probably most familiar with seeing Comic Sans in um, a school setting, particularly a primary school. So, you know, it has that connotation of school, simple typeface and young children. The one below that's glittery is, um, I think it might be Joker or Curls, I think it's Curls typeface but it's got uh, glitter overlaid with it because that sort of implies a particular type of woman, shall we say, but you know, something that um, that stereotype that women are supposed to like pink glittery things. So, you know, it plays into that, uh, you know, so each of these have slightly different connotations. And we might say that the uh, version of the word on the right hand side that's Times New Roman typeface, that that is the one that we perhaps perceive as being most neutral and, and just sort of carrying information. But even Times New Roman has additional connotations uh, because it's the typeface that has been used traditionally in the Times newspaper. So that then carries connotations, uh, you know, of what that the Times newspaper stands for, and so on, you know, so lots of different, um, as I say, connotations going on there. Uh, and what a cursive script, like the, the woman at the very top and the one at the very bottom, uh, what they mean compared to uh, a stencil script or something, the one in the middle that looks um, sort of uh, ancient in some way. And actually the one in the middle, the uh, typeface is called Herculaneum. So, you know, it has then uh, connotations of ancient Greece, uh, not ancient Rome, because, well, actually Herculaneum is in Italy. So, yeah, so Greece, Rome, the classics. And I mean, it, it also has sort of um, elements of almost looking like Egyptian or something like that. So each of them have slightly different connotations. So these are all things to bear in mind when you are turning your online digital articles that are on Medium when you're turning some or all of those into something appropriate for a print style magazine for issue.com for that final assignment. So thinking now about not just typeface but also magazine layout. Now we touched a little bit on this last week when we were thinking about multimodality and words and pictures. But, you know, when you're thinking about how you're going to lay out the front cover of your magazine for issue.com, and you will need a front and a back cover, you do need to start considering what is it that you want your reader to get straight away? What do you want them to understand? What's being communicated by that front cover? And this will involve you uh, thinking through whether you want to have a straightforward portfolio that just shows all of the pieces that you've put together, which is fine, uh, or maybe you want to go for a magazine that is more thematic. So it might be a woman's magazine, it might be a men's magazine, it might be sport, uh, it could be games, you know, absolutely anything at all. Anything that you're interested in, you can turn it into a, a magazine. But once you've actually considered those themes, you then also need to start thinking, well, who are my potential audience? And 
If it's a case of you wanting to produce something that looks very professional for, say, a portfolio, again, you need to think, well, who am I, who am I aiming this at? Who do I want to look at this? And, you know, once you've worked out who your audience is, and this is exactly the same as writing an article, as soon as you know who your audience is, that will start to tell you about the various dem demographics and what sorts of things that that audience is interested in. So we can take from this particular cover of Woman magazine that it's aimed at women because it's called Woman. Uh, it's aimed at women who are uh, quite traditional because we've got this notion of quite a lot of pink being used there. Um, we've also got pictures of women on the front cover and, you know, these are all white women. You know, there is... Um, Possibly some elements of aspiration uh, because uh, we have things about um, slimming and uh, about uh, ways to eat less meat. But this is not, not particularly aspirational as far as um, sort of aiming this at women who want to be perceived as being... Um, upper middle class, to be rich, wealthy or so on. This is not that type of, of magazine. This is absolutely a magazine aimed at uh, women who are perhaps uh, what we might describe as middle or working class. And um, it's about depicting a reality. So we have at the top uh, left hand corner there, we've got mum confesses, I had to learn to love my kids. So this is absolutely about depicting the reality of some women. Likewise, uh, the next story down underneath the slimming world, join for free, we've got how we lost 24 stone. So and then also even the, the central um, story, new body, new me, TV star's husband reveals how she changed. You know, it's all absolutely about um, the reality for an awful lot of women. And uh, the reason why I say not particularly aspirational in terms of wealth is because we have at the top right there, save 20 percent with Roman. Uh, which is a, a clothing brand. And again, it's a clothing brand that is aimed at uh, women probably from about 35 up. So, you know, it's this is aimed at um, mums, shall we say, but not particularly young mums. It's not aiming for that, um, you know, sort of uh, 20s. 20-something uh, and maybe into early 30s. It's not really aimed at them. It's absolutely aimed at, at mums who've got kids, who've got family, uh, you know, and who, who want to lose weight and so on. So this is also uh, the type of magazine that is uh, fairly cheap to buy. There's no price on it, but um, I think Woman Magazine is uh, probably no more than a pound. Uh, and it's the type of magazine a bit like, I mean, it used to be very much more aspirational, but full of knitting patterns. Uh, but it's um, the type of magazine that you see at supermarket checkouts, you know, along with things like uh, Chat Magazine, Take a Break and so on. And very much their stock in trade um, is the uh, sort of reality um, story, you know, those confessional stories. Uh, and, you know, we have that confesses at the top. Down the bottom, we've got revealed, you know, so it, it's absolutely about, you know, telling us the secrets. So if you want to go for that type of magazine, you know, you need to be familiar with the common tropes of that magazine, the things that they include. And that's not to say that you have to do a woman's magazine at all. Uh, but I've I've chosen um, largely women's. Yeah, I have chosen mag uh, women's magazines simply because they have the probably the widest variety um, in sort of style. So um, this we could make a, a comparison of how uh, Marie Claire magazine that is aimed at a different demographic. You know how we could compare that to woman magazine. So Marie Claire, it's a name. Um, and, you know, it's very much aimed at uh, young professional women. Uh, it is quite aspirational. Um, and yes, we, it, it's one of the glossy magazines, whereas uh, Woman magazine isn't a glossy. So um, the difference in whether a magazine is glossy or not is to do with the paper quality. And that means 
that um, the glossy magazines are far more expensive, um, partly because they cost more to produce because they're on a glossy thick type of paper, whereas Woman magazine is on a cheaper, um, still sort of glossy-ish, but you know, it's on a, a cheaper uh, paper quality. So that makes uh, Women magazine uh, cheaper to produce. Marie Claire tends to have an awful lot of fashion features. As it says there, fashion special. Uh, you know, it's absolutely about being aspirational, but also it's about um, sort of real stories again, but to a different demographic. So instead of, um, you know, revealing stories, it's not using those types of um, sort of shocking uh, rhetorical um, devices, you know, of using that, that type of language of, you know, confidential reveal and, and so on. Instead, it's got um, the story, the second story on the right there is report the UK abortion crisis no one is talking about. So it's a report and it's about an issue. Whereas if that had been in Woman magazine, the chances would have been it would have been uh, something like um, it would have been a particular woman's story. And it would have been something along the lines of, um, you know, either celebrity revealing her story or, uh, you know, mother, uh, mum confesses her um, abortion crisis or, you know, something like that. Um, so it's absolutely about uh, sort of not quite depersonalising it, but making more of an issue uh, that is an issue that sort of affects everyone, whereas Woman magazine will make it quite specific to this is one woman's story. Um, and we also have there the next story down, how strong are you? So yes, that's directed at you and very much more aspirational, but it's not telling you, oh, um, you know, this is how to lose weight. This is how to get the figure that you want. Uh, a lot of uh, glossy women's magazines have moved away from that lose weight, get thinner and so on, and are being far more sort of body positive. And instead, it's absolutely about strength of building a body and mind. So, you know, it's a very different take, uh, but still being concerned with um, appearance and you know so we've got uh, fashion special so this is is absolutely concerned with appearance and also you know the, the top uh, right hand story there about Laura Harrier uh, young Hollywood's fresh new face so we've still got that notion of um, sort of women's faces and beauty and so on being there but, you know, there is there is more to it than just that. So also think about whereas uh, with the woman magazine we had, and if we just go back to that, we have an awful lot of pink going on there. A little bit of yellow, but uh, quite a lot of pink. So again, it's aimed at uh, women who are more likely to prefer that use of pink and uh, will quite often, you know, buy uh, pink objects and, and so on. You know, it, it really is as sort of as simple or simplistic as that. Whereas this is going um, and, and trying to be more sophisticated and uh, the colours that are used on here absolutely match the photograph of the woman on the front cover as well. So, you know, we've got all of that working together and they're very much being red, white and black. And it's a very simple paired down colour palette. And yes, we've got um, sort of grey of the background, but that allows all of the uh, the other colours to jump out, you know, sort of the black of the young woman's hair and of um, the sort of the, the dress bodice that she's wearing. So, you know, that that jumps out together with the fact that her eyebrows are very dark, her eyes are dark, you know, so it absolutely works together as a whole thing. And that's definitely something to bear in mind, because this is certainly how far more upmarket magazine, shall we say. Uh, this is what they go for, whereas uh, when we compare that to a uh, woman, we've got uh, pink, we've got white, we've got yellow, we've got blue, uh, we've got some orange, uh, but mainly it's pink, yellow, blue, and then a white background. So, you know, it, it's a lot busier, 
um, but they're they're sort of um, like bubblegum colours, and that that's about so that that white uh, not white the yellow, the blue and the pink they're very much bubblegum colours there, and that's to really sort of show how this magazine is fun. Um, so you know it's um, the whole sort of aim of this and the fact that we have these sort of smiling toothy smiling faces uh, you know it, it's there yes it's confessional but it's supposed to be about oh this is have a bit of fun spend some time on your own you know read the magazine this is you time all of those sort of different connotations this magazine you know that the model on the front is not smiling um, you know and that doesn't mean that she's not happy it just means that you know that that uh, this particular cover is going very much for uh, being stylish upmarket and you know being serious and and woman magazine is not trying to be serious this is a complete change is vice magazine and uh, i think this is now almost entirely online uh, but you know this is using a color palette of you know white skin but red absolutely sort of red and, and sort of pink and uh, you know it's it's absolutely echoing connotations of different things there is clearly um sexual connotations going on there and you know the, the very fact that the magazine is called vice uh, but it's also very much high end, um, high fashion concept stuff. So, you know, it's aiming to be extremely stylish. And, uh, you know, we've got um, a straightforward denotation there of uh, drug taking uh, with, you know, an LSD tablet. I assume I'm guessing here. I don't know, but that's the obvious thing. Um, and, you know, as I say, the fact that uh, this is a presumably a woman's mouth, um, you know, but red lipstick and it's glossy and, and so on, which then has sort of, as I said, additional connotations of uh, sex, uh, which ties into vice, but also drug taking ties into vice, you know. So, again, it works together and it is extremely pared down. And the only other text we've got there is the top right where it says free. And I can't actually make out what the rest. I think it's the date. But, you know, so um, it is possible to have that type of magazine cover that um, doesn't tell you what the articles are about but that you know are held it within the magazine but it it gives you a pretty good idea that you're probably going to have maybe an article about drug taking maybe articles about sex you know because that's vice's usual sort of stock in trade of um writing about things that are regarded as a vice but you know it's a very much a sort of a stylish um magazine that attempts to be a trendsetter and then we have um, magazines like this, which is also, again, very stylish. And here we have, again, um, a woman's face and, uh, you know, using a very different colour palette um, that is based around uh, darker, more muted shades. And we've got, you know, uh, red-ish coloured lips there. But, you know, this does not have the same sexual connotations that Vice magazine had, you know, and instead this is absolutely about being stylish and again sort of being fashionable and being aimed at a younger market. And, you know, we have the title of the uh, magazine up the top there, um, Garage, and we've got then down at the bottom the only well we've also got garage uh, number 11 magazine fall winter 2016 uh, but you know the the model's face is not obscured at all um, apart from that that sort of you know the, the stuff at the top and the text at the bottom but you know the bulk of her face is left clear to allow her <clears throat> excuse me to allow her to stare out at you and you know that that uh, confrontational stare again is all on purpose it's all uh, purposeful because that gives you an idea that the articles that you're going to read in this particular magazine are going to be confrontational 
this is a magazine that does not look away. So you're going to be reading things in it that are perhaps um, things that you might not agree with or things that you might find unsettling. But we also know that it's quite aspirational because the text at the bottom gives us um, certainly one uh, high end fashion name, Karl Lagerfeld. So, you know, that that tells us that this is probably going to be um, a magazine that has got fashion, high, high uh, fashion with sort of catwalk and couture. Uh, but, you know, we've also got um, underneath that unlock Willow's Snapchat lens. So, um, you know, we, we know that this is absolutely aimed at a younger age group than, say, that first woman magazine. Um, you know, this is aimed at uh, digital natives and not women who are uh, going to be reading, as I say, things like um, Woman Magazine, which is aimed at a slightly older demographic. So to sum up, every single element on the page carries meaning. So that's the colours, the typeface that's used, the layout, all of them carry meaning. Now, we understand all of those meanings because we understand today's signs. We know what um, a red, glossy, um, open mouth means. Uh, you know, we, we know that uh, using the colours pink, blue and um, yellow in those particular shades, it's got that sort of um, fun bubble gum colours, you know, but it's all dependent upon the reader knowing that that's what they mean in our contemporary culture. So that means that if somebody was to look at those magazine covers in 100 years time or 200 years time, they may not get all of the different aspects. In the same way uh, that if you read Shakespeare now, unless you understand all of the additional connotations of Shakespearean language and in jokes and references to poetry and politics and so on of the time, you're going to find it quite hard to actually get all of those jokes that Shakespeare has in there. You know, in, in the same way that, you know, you, if you watch a film um, or a TV show, if you watch something like um, the TV show Mock the Week, it works now today, this week, because you know what the references are to, or something like Have I Got News For You. You watch it now and you get all of the different references. But if you watch an episode from two or three years ago, you might not get a lot of the references, you know, because uh, contemporary culture has moved on. So this is where we read a page. And this, of course, ties into what we looked at last week with multimodality. But it's also about using semiotics, working out what all of these different signs mean. And, and we can use that in the critical commentaries to actually do that analysis and to unpick, well, I've used this particular typeface, I've used this particular colour, this particular layout, because I know that it will read, it will be read rather and understood by the demographic that I've aimed this at. So that essentially is what uh, the reason why we look at semiotics. OK, so that's us all done. And all that remains is for me to apologise if for the last five minutes you've been hearing a cat meowing. Um, he has been fed, but um, he doesn't want me to know that. Anyway, um, I'll see you in uh, the seminars this week.